outer orange. Today, we are in a different view. Yes, we are, because I'm going to be starting to do something that is a little bit different. It's something I've touched upon in videos. Basically, we're going to be doing the top most impactful cards of this set, which in this, ver in this version, will be the Omens Eternal, which is set five. We're basically going to break down some really key cards that you should be playing or should be picking up for this set in particular. And we're just going to go down the line and go through these. Bam! Welcome to Lyriel archer throne uh, one of the most impactful cards of this set a very surprise a card that's very surprisingly saw very little play over in the jp side is definitely a menace over on the english side as this card basically negates a lot of decks and what they try to do and she's really hard to play into and play around very strong card basically this card says you can rest her as a quick effect and deal two damage to your enemy leader and it says while she is on the field your leader doesn't take ability damage and you might be wondering well why does that matter well a lot of people fear egg egg literally is a deck that tries to burn you down this card basically goes around that and there's also a shenna who's not as known but it's another slow burner deck this deck plays around it if you're afraid of if your discard plays around it, if you're afraid of sanguine uh, this also plays around it and then on top of that she also negates you from taking any health damage so if you play path of purgatory this card is insane you can play this card in Aegis, by the way which lets you basically draw cards and then heal cards in abyss this card is absolutely nuts because you can basically uh, negate any potential uh not even not being able to heal so soul dealer also you can basically just heal for free and not have to deal yourself damage there are so many small applications of this card the last thing i want to mention about this card is also a gap closer is what i like to call it basically if you play a deck where you're just basically burning down your opponent or you're trying to get to a certain win con you can base if you draw into this card and your opponent is exactly two damage you just play this and you win the game because there you can't play around this card once it happens like they basically have no interaction with it because your abilities will go off first so if you just need to close as a gap closer, you can do that. It's happened to me. I've had games where my opponents had exactly two damage. I drop down this card and I win the game. Very, very powerful card. It basically literally nullifies certain decks from the meta right now. I will say people have a really big fear of egg. I'm not really too sure why, but if you're really scared of egg, you would just play this card and you should be able to win the game. I won't say it's guaranteed because you definitely need to be playing a strong deck that can deal with egg. But I don't think egg is that impactful if you're under a good deck. And on top of that, you have the Lyreal. Y'all ready for the next card? Bam! Welcome to Marwin Omen of Repo. So you might be wondering why is this here? Because this this is the card that basically makes a deck that wasn't really super relevant extremely relevant in the set. And that is the Aegis Haven build. One of the strongest decks in my opinion in the format. I do believe Dragon is also a very good top defender alongside with this deck. Like, but this deck is just insane. This evolve that this deck has is nuts. The evolve for this, you basically get the heal, draw, skip, return. Get, maximize your points or you can hardy volley for eight and get all those effects anyway it is a very impactful card it has aura on top of it which is very very strong a lot of decks have a hard time playing around aura and this whole deck is relying on aura overall this is insanely strong it's the reason why i think we're going to see a lot of agus just in general because of how impactful this card is making it out to be some people are actually cutting this card out and i'm just shocked why about about cutting this card out you don't have to play this on curve i feel like people just really hard play this on curve and then they lose i think nice. the card's bad this card's absolutely insane it swings for eight damage because it's an 8 8 evolve it's extremely hard to remove a lot of people have to tech in cards to remove this card if they go down that route um this this is a very hard to play around card and by the way there's some discussions about lightning blast lightning blast does not work as long as this card's on the board because it has aura so if you have this card and you have agus on the board you cannot nice. lightning blast the board so even dragon has a harder time into a card like this they have other options don't you worry they do have other ways to slowly remove this card but it does take a while it is an 8-8 eight, eight. It's, it's just a very strong card um i just think this deck's low-key insane it's a little inconsistent but it even has a one drop that searches for this exact card by the way so you can always play this whenever you basically need to if you're really smart you'll play this at the optimal times if your opponent has a full board you almost never want to play this card because it's a little slow in that aspect it is an eight mana play or you skip your turn play if you're skipping your turn you're, you're giving your opponent two turns to beat your skull in very dangerous territories you just be mind be mindful of the tr of trending those waters but long story short i think this card is actually one of the best cards in the set i think the only card that's better than this card is agus himself because agus and this card work really well together 
just to keep that in mind. Bam! Welcome in Fina. Now, Fina is an interesting card because a lot of people are running this card because of other cards that are also defining sort of the meta they're going into in step five. So this card basically nukes one drops. They have to be specifically one drops, and it's very important because um, there's a lot of one drops in this game that are really good that we'll discuss here shortly. Basically, this card also lets you search off the top five to grab one drops if you're playing a very heavy one drop deck. You can find those cards easier. Basically, enables for more rush play attempts if you're looking for certain cards. Really good in egg, by the way. Really good in other decks too. You can be played in sword as well. She's basically just kind of uh throw a sprinkle in a lot of a lot of decks and she also like just like i said you can search or you can drop one drops you can kill bell ringers this way you can kill nuisances that you may see on the board that you may not want to deal with there are a couple one drops that are coming that will be nice. explained that really really make this card even better overall it's not the best of the best but it is a card that people are teching in to deal with and it is definitely going to be a techable card at the end you give a point if there's a little really heavy one drop that is or whatever's happening it would always be a really good slot and i definitely think this play this card has a home for this set as it is very played in a lot of decks well you might be asking yourself well what in the world are these one drops that you're talking about orange what could it possibly be well do i have the card for you bam it's the servant of usurpation uh this this card is extremely nasty if you don't get off the board because it gets power every time you your, your opponent mills cards and they'll be milling quite a lot with how the deck works so of uh, this this card alone is forcing people to run finas and snipes and because of all that you can't not forget about this card because it's the reason people are running the other cards um, it's like the reason people are scared of, of, of the card like this because it can randomly deal six damage out of nowhere and it gets extremely buff. And actually, I've died to two of these by skipping my turn one time and I learned my lesson to never skip my turn against Sword when they when they have a board or have even one unit on the board. It is very scary. You don't want to do it. Long story short, uh, it's a very simple effect. Like I said, all it does is it gets power for every time your opponent mills and it does get a power off of its own Fenfear, which also mills a card. So it literally instantly becomes a 2-2. And it just gets bigger and bigger you need to nuke this card right. there's one more card i want to talk about however i actually probably could have stopped at the ones i mentioned at least for this set in particular um but it is it is impactful but it's kind of one of those cards where it's situationally impactful but it's still a really good card definitely a card you should look out for and that is bam this is the omen of silence it is actually a very strong card on its own this is a card that forces you to discard on top of also forcing you to have to play spells additionally as i mentioned earlier there are snipes and surefires and basically cards that people want to play to deal with forest states or certain situations this card forces you to have to play very awkwardly very weirdly on top of it evolve telling you that you also have to discard a card on top of that i will say this is definitely one of the more interesting omens and it's definitely an omen we'll be seeing again it is a very techable omen as he's not restricted to any specific deck you can just throw him into every abyss deck if you want to it just works in all of the abyss decks and it's just a card that people are teching in a lot in and out in their decks um so definitely an interesting card i will say possibly the weakest of the five here and may not even necessarily need to be on here i was originally gonna put angelic snipe on here as the fifth one because it is a very meta defining card right now but i chose to kind of keep it more interesting but personally i think an honorable mention is definitely angelic snipe and surefire those cards are just absolutely insane in this format probably one of the strongest spells you could be playing in your decks if you if you have the slots to play spells those are probably the spells to be playing surefire nukes a lot of cards like this one because this becomes a four four a lot of four fours are out there that are really scary surefire answers all of them snipe answers the little bodies that become big bodies by on themselves we have the kind of the dual package of both of them where both of them do exactly what you need them to do they answer the, the sword decks while also answering evolve decks so you definitely want to be on the lookout for those cards as you're deck building in your decks and this card is definitely something to kind of look out for especially if you're playing those spells because it can negate you if you leave yourself with two mana but uh this will cost you three if you want to play surefire or if you leave yourself with two mana and you want to play two snipes you can only play one so just something to kind of look out for that's basically it for this i kind of wanted to do a quick breakdown of basically cards that i deem as like deep deep powerhouses or deck or cards that you should maybe possibly be playing i will tell you right now every card i've, I've showed on this list i'm playing in my decks especially the neutrals or even cards that are a little bit more uh more uh, generic like like this omen of silence right here i hope you guys enjoyed a different form of, of my videos i want to do something like this for vanguard too if you guys like this i hope it was enjoyable i try to keep it short and simple just a quick just a couple quick cards to look out for these are definitely gonna be cards you'll be seeing as you'll be battling it out for five cards or potentially going into that six we might see some of these cards come back 
So definitely be on the lookout. Pittycards.shop, code orange if you need any of your goodies, uh, any, any any goodies, any cards, sleeves, etc. Pittycards got it all, code orange to save yourself some money. As always, please like, subscribe, comment. If you believe that there are cards that should have been on this list that I didn't put on this list, feel free to leave in the comments below. Other than that, guys, I'm going to peace out now. So peace out. Das Vidani. I'll see you guys in a future video. Bye!